What's up, guys, and welcome to BitCast episode 110 for the week of January 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Jake Martin, and on the show this week, we have the folks over from Nintendo Watcher, Justin and Matthew. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. I, I, I don't know how to do this without it being like a weird pause. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out. Damon Hatfield from IGN does this all on his podcast, but he'll go like, Justin, and then Justin says something. Matthew, and then Matthew says something. <laughs> so we're going to try it that way. So, Justin. What's up, man? <laughs> Perfect. And Matthew. How's it going, Jake? Good to be back. <laughs> hey. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Glad to have you guys back. And uh, for the first podcast of 2023. Beautiful. Um, and as tradition has it, we have to talk about the games that are coming out in 2023. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So if you are tuning in today, uh, run of the show is going to be obviously what we've been playing. And then, like I just mentioned, the games of 2023. So we have a list we're referencing uh, from Polygon, and we're going to be checking those out and just listing off all the amazing games coming out this year. And then we each have picked our own three top favorite ones. So you'll have uh, at least nine titles that you definitely know are verified, certified, the best games you should absolutely buy and check out in 2023. And then everything else you can kind of forget about. Uh, but before we do that, just quick, a uh, little bit of housekeeping for you guys. If you are a fan of the podcast, be sure to subscribe. That helps us out a lot. Uh, leave a review. Um, and uh, I'll do this at the top of the show, but at the end of the well, uh, and, and as well, if you guys want to, um, if anyone wants to jump in and mention what Nintendo Watcher is, uh, just tell folks... Uh, what you guys do and what you're all about. Yeah, uh, Nintendo Watcher is a um, website, YouTube channel, podcast, everything. It's it's all about the goings on at Nintendo. We do um, new stuff, retro stuff. Um, we put out a podcast every week. Um, there's usually a video component to it on YouTube, but a shorter version. And on NintendoWatcher.com, um, we've got articles and um, reviews, things like that. Justin does most of the work. I'm just a talking head on the podcast for most weeks, but uh, you know, we, he's probably carries about 80% of the workload over there. Otherwise, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess uh, the co-pilot for a lot of that. Well, these guys are absolute beasts. They're definitely being humble in, in the content they produce, but yeah, Justin, um, Justin's doing good work over there. And now Matt, have you written any, written any uh, content on the site? Yeah. A few. Yeah, I've done okay. some lists and reviews and things like that. I'm okay. uh, hoping to do a little bit more, get a little more involved this year with uh, some of the written content and uh, YouTube stuff that we've got planned for the next year. So you'll see my name a little bit more over there on Nintendo Watcher in 2023, aside from just the pod. But uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, that's ramping up. We're ramping up to that. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Well, uh, yeah, definitely go check them out. Subscribe uh, to their podcast uh, on all services, whatever, wherever your preferred platform is. You can check them out there. Uh, they do great work. And they had an awesome one recently about uh, Persona. That was a fun listen through again because I love those games. <laughs> and with Persona 4 Golden and the th I guess 3 also coming yeah. to yeah, three Switch. I'm, I'm pretty excited because I, I had <laughs> 4 Golden on my Vita. I started it and then I never finished it and I sold my Vita. And so I have, <laughs> I have some regrets. <laughs> it's a gem. You just have to find 200 hours to play both of them, you know? Exactly. It's that easy. It's, you know, time is an unlimited resource that we all have. Um, no, no, um, no less than anybody else. So definitely <laughs> need to get in on that grind. Uh, so all that being said, thank you guys again for so much for being on the podcast. And uh, yeah, let's jump into the first topic of the show. It's going to be, what are you playing? And we'll start with Justin. What, do you, what have you been playing lately? I've uh, been mainly focused on a little game called Chained Echoes. We've been talking mm. about it a lot on the pod. We've got a pod coming up in the next couple of weeks strictly devoted to Chained Echoes. If you haven't heard of it before, it's this uh, love letter to 16-bit RPGs. Um it's an indie game made by, I think, a single developer or just a handful of developers, really small team mm -hmm. anyway. Um, it's got traces of Chrono Trigger, uh, Final Fantasy VI, and it's available on virtually every platform. Um, really, really good game. Matthew's been playing it a little bit too. Mm -hmm. you're, you're into it, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd love to. I actually rolled credits on it a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's, Oh, dang. It's, Really good, Jake. I think you were talking about picking it up at some point. I don't know if you have yet or not, but it's definitely worth it. On Game Pass. Yes, I think I added you boys on Twitter and I was like, all right, when do you guys tell me about this game? Because <laughs> it looks so good. Um, yeah. 
So you have rolled credits, Matthew. Do you feel like I, mean, I think you you actually said something about how you feel like it might be one of your contenders for like game of the oh, year? One just... of the best of 2022. One of the best by far of 2022. Um, it's yeah, we so we did our 2022 uh, game of the year episode before I rolled credits on it. Afterwards, I would have fought to sneak it in somewhere on that mm. list, um, you know, had had we recorded a little bit later. So um, it's worth the time. That's coming from someone though who is, you know, we talk about this a lot on Nintendo Watcher. We are JRPG guys first and foremost. We're trying to branch out this year. We're trying to <laughs> bring in more than just JRPGs. But um, you know, as someone who loves grew up loving Chrono Trigger and uh, Final Fantasy VI, Xeno Gears, and all those games from from the PS1 and SNES days, um, if you like those games, you'll you'll have something you enjoy in Chain Echoes, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, you sold me, guys. You, you, you sold me. I just now yeah, I just gotta find more time. <laughs> but it's pretty about. short. That's the that's yeah. the upside. You can get through it in about uh, twenty hours, twenty five hours. That is very short. appealing. That is, yeah. I, mean, I think dope. I got twenty seven uh, at, at credits, and I did most of the side content. So if you just mainline it, you can knock it out in 20, 20, 22, 25 hours. Easy. Oh, that's that's easy. That's yeah. easy. That's Simple. a that's so a easy. cakewalk. That's incredible. Seriously, that's great. That is really good to hear. I'm excited about that. Uh, and then you mentioned. This second thing on here, Justin, every 2D Simpsons game. Yeah. So this is a, <laughs> a video project I'm working on for Nintendo Watcher, ranking every single 2D Simpsons game on Nintendo hardware. So oh I've been going goodness. back and playing through the NES games that are trash and the <laughs> Super Nintendo games that are also trash and the oh, Game no. Boy games. Actually, it's been really fun. Um, yeah. I would say like half of them are really, really bad, but... Uh, there, there's some some hidden gems i would say in there if you're especially if you're a simpsons fan what's yeah. your criteria are you are you saying i'm gonna finish these or are you just like i'm gonna experience them for what they are and just kind of do that you know i i was jumping into them just to see um how they were before i decided to do this this video project on them and some of them i bounced off really quickly mm -hmm. so i thought let me talk about why i'm bouncing off if i can't get through but a few stages Maybe it's a difficulty thing. Maybe it's just the controls are really antiquated. Um, and just talk about that openly. So a couple of them, you know, I could get like a couple hours into and then, you know, they just, they're like arcade hard, you know, they're just Eating outrageously quarters. difficult. So I didn't finish all of them, but um, I would say I've, I've played enough of all of them to be representative of the overall gameplay. Okay. So it's, it's been a long project and then, you know, you're, capturing uh, film for it and um, gameplay footage for it and writing up pieces about every single one of them. It's taken quite a long time, but I'm really stoked to have it out probably next week. Heck yeah, man. That Thanks. sounds like a beefy project, but I love, I love that that is like the, that is such a niche focus. I love that. And there's like a ton of Simpsons uh, diehard fans out there that mm -hmm. I feel like would just eat that up. I know I, I have fond memories of the arcade game. I don't know if yeah. I played much else. I know there was like Hit and Run, which was also like a huge, mm -hmm. but that wasn't 2D, obviously. Uh, so I think those are the two that I remember the most. Yeah, I'm leaving off Hit and Run and um, there's another one. I don't know, another 3D one. I think it was for the GameCube or something. Um, and then there was the Simpsons game that came out with the movie for the Wii. I'm leaving all those off because those are it was so much better than those early NES games. <laughs> it just didn't feel fair to compare them. Those uh, games are too good. I can't put them on this list. They're it's too not. good. I mean, Hit and Run, come on. It's great. That was that was a lot of people's uh, shining classic favorite for the Simpsons mm -hmm. series. So that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Well, I look forward to that. Uh, yeah. And that'll be on Nintendo Watch, you said, next week. Yeah, I'm aiming for uh, probably next Thursday or next Friday. You said it on the podcast, so it has to happen now. So, <laughs> made it to it. Yep, yep. <laughs> Everything right. said here is binding. Yeah, uh, Matthew, what you got on your plate? What are you playing over there? So I'm about halfway through Final Fantasy One Pixel Remaster. Mm. Justin and I have a you know a, a series we're starting up this year. We're trying to get some community uh, play alongs and you know. Um, podcast episodes up on the Final Fantasy series. So we're running through every mainline game, even ones not on Nintendo hardware. So we're looking to do a full Final Fantasy playthrough over the next probably two years, right? You know, there's no way we're getting through the entire series in one year. Um, yeah. But we're going to bring in, you know, guests for those episodes and chat with them about, you know, the games that they love and why they love them. And uh, so I'm starting off with uh, our first game on the list, which is Final Fantasy One. We're doing the pixel remasters in mm. uh, preparation for that release on the Switch, right? Perfect. So we're 
we're not playing them on the switch, which is a little bit cheating, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and I'm having a blast with it. So I'm about uh, halfway through that at this point. Um, hopefully we'll be chatting, sitting down to chat about that in February sometime. Um, other than that, I'm also diving into my backlog this year. You know, I got a couple of weeks. Well, now only a week until fire emblem engaged. So I'm trying Not to get, time. I'm trying to dive into one uh, before my first 2023 game comes out this year. Um, and I'm starting up Okami HD, which is, yeah. uh, you know, an old PS2 slash Wii game that um, I had on the PlayStation 2 and never ended up getting a chance to finish. Um, you know, it came out at the end of the PS2 life cycle. So I think mm-hmm. I jumped into the PS3 and then, you know, that's what happens. So uh, picking that up and itching for a Zelda like, and I think that fits the bill. So uh, we're jumping into Okami HD uh, this week. I as love well. that. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah, I saw that on your list and uh, I bought Okami HD for Switch and it has since just sat in my collection. Just yep. Yep. just looking at me all sad, just being like, why? Why have you abandoned me? <laughs> that's and, what games uh, are for, man. They just sit there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not for fun. They're not for trophies. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, so I'm trying to I'm trying to dust off some of the you know the ones that have been just sitting on the shelf for far too long, and that's that's the first one for this year. So, yeah, excited man. for that. Yeah, so yeah, similar to you, I'm trying to like clean out some stuff that I've been meaning <laughs> to play uh, before we roll heavily into the the season. And so, uh, yeah, I just finished up uh, Tunic, uh, nice. which was great. However, I feel like I did this game a disservice. Let me tell you guys about this. Okay, so I played most of the entire game without any assistance at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I got to a part where I I, maybe I just didn't know where to go or I just like got stuck. (laughs) And I was just like, dude, I'm getting my ass kicked by this, (laughs) this person like this, this, this boss. I'm not going to mention it. I don't want to, you know, spoil anything. And uh, so then I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. So I, 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 you know, puttered around for like an hour or two, like trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go. I could not figure it out. Um, And so then I turned on that, like, there's like accessibility features that like you can either take no damage or you can <laughs> like you oof, turn the, diff- the the combat difficulty down. And so I was like, I'll just do this and I'll just progress the story and see what happens. And then I ended up just beating the game. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, yeah. nothing. No shame in that. I, You know, I came around on that, I think. Uh, early last year if you need to use you know whatever tools are available to you to complete a game if you're enjoying it for the story you just want to see how it ends but the experience is too much do what you got to do man get the game finished and you know it's a win's a win well that's so that's kind of where i was but like this was a i think what i had done this in the wrong order like i think Uh i was not supposed to have done this thing yet and i found i did it i did it anyways (laughs) And just because I had the accessibility thing turned on, I was able to actually achieve it where I think I was supposed to have leveled up and gotten stronger and gotten more <laughs> items in the world and then come back. Because after I beat it, I was like, I was really confused. I was like, I feel like there was more that I'm supposed to be doing. And I found this is like the golden path. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or not, but there's like these clues that are in the manual as you're picking it up oh, okay. that will lead you to like stronger weapons and, and stuff and i was like oh <laughs> whoops I was, I was like well uh there it is uh but overall great experience great game would recommend had a blast with it and it didn't take that long to beat especially if you turn on accessibility features yeah just blast right through it <laughs> yeah uh and then uh mario and luigi superstar saga i don't know if you guys ever played this on the game boy advance uh when it originally came out but i have a little miu mini and so i've been playing through some old Game Boy Advance back catalog stuff on there. Nice. And uh, that game is so good, man. It's just like, it's everything I want out of an RPG. I love that action turn based combat, you know, action based combat where you have to put in an, an input to like time it correctly and stuff. I just love that style of combat. Uh, so had a blast just playing through that. And it's a lot more of a robust RPG than I thought it was, to be honest. Mm-hmm. There's, it's, it's a lengthy game. Yeah. If I remember it correctly, that series was really the, um, the heir to Super Mario RPG from the yes. Super Nintendo. I mean, you've got Paper Mario, but that's sort of RPG light. Yes, yes. Yeah. This feels more in tune with yeah Mario, uh, Super Mario RPG, um, and it was like, yeah, it's just like the the it, the game does enough stuff to where you are like challenged, and I, there was no accessibility features, so I couldn't cheat yeah. my way through that <laughs> one. I had to actually beat it, you know. Uh, but I had a great time. Had a great time with that one as well. Um, and then I also I just started up God of War Ragnarok. I want to finish that yeah. before before it all hits. And uh, I'm enjoying my time with that. So that's a great game. Great game. Good stuff. Good stuff on the horizon. And uh, even better things now 
that we're looking towards 2023. So let's jump into the next topic of the show. Uh, games of 2023 we're most excited for. So this list comes from Polygon, as I mentioned at the top of the show. And let me see if I can pull this link up from here. Oh, oh, oh wait. Sorry. Open link. There we go. Nailed it. Technology. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to read through this and I'm, I'm going to skip over some that I just don't feel like would be the ones you would shout out. Um, but we're going to go through this. So. Persona 3 Portable, starting in January on Nintendo Switch, all the all the systems basically on the 19th. Persona 4 Golden also on the 19th. So two great RPGs already out, out the gates swinging. We got Fire Emblem Engage on the 20th of January. Forspoken uh, for PS5 and Windows PC on January 24th. Uh, and then we got the Dead Space. I think that's the remake, right? Is that the yeah. Dead Space remake? Oh my god! Yeah, gosh. Dead Space remake on the twenty seventh. January is already slammed. And then Age of Empires too. If you're a fan of that game, Definitive Edition. So January is looking great already as it is. Uh, and then we go into February. We have Hogwarts Legacy on the tenth for most current gen uh, platforms. We have Atomic Heart um, and Wild Hearts. I get those two mixed up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which one's which. One's like the weird, like futuristic alien robot people and the other one i don't actually know what that other one other one is yeah so i think wild hearts is the one that's kind of like uh, what is it like a monster huntery type mm. yeah. a bunch of, bunch of big old beasties you're fighting <laughs> big old beasties you are correct yeah atomic heart is like if the russians would have won the cold war or something it's yes. like an alternate <laughs> future yeah yes yes okay. yeah you're absolutely right that for some reason it's super futuristic Yes, and that no one has faces, and yeah, <laughs> it looks like a fever dream that I don't want to be a part of. Uh, <laughs> and then we have a uh, like a dragon. Uh, Ishin comes out on the twenty first. We have PSVR two, which is notable mention, not a game, but that's that's coming out on the twenty second. And then with that, Horizon Call of the Mountain, uh, and then a whole bunch of other VR titles like Moss and stuff like that. Uh, let me see, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe Nintendo Switch on Whoa. the twenty fourth. Hey, oh. Octopath Traveler 2, yep. uh, which I am excited about because the first game loved it, just needed a little more. So this hopefully is that. Uh Destiny 2 Lightfall. I know a lot of folks out there love Destiny still. Yes. Um, so there you go. On the 28th. So that's February. March, we have Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Is that the single developer one that like looks freaking nuts? And it's like the uh mm -mm. okay, what am no, I thinking I think of? This one's I think this one's Team Ninja. Um what am I, or am I mixing that up with somebody else? This is the one. It's it's sort of like uh yeah, Koei Tecmo, um, kind of. I don't want to say Souls like more like a Neo like. I think. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, I know which one you're talking about. Bright Memory was the, like the demo that that single developer released. Mm -hmm. I think and it looks. It's like a half man, half like monkey guy that um, just like it just looks incredible I, I forget what the name of that game is it's supposed to come out sometime hmm. soon but anyways moving on that game is coming out well long fallen dynasty last of us part part one for pc that's great uh finally. yeah finally uh just in time for i, I mean I, I guess a little bit before this is after now that the hbo series is coming out but hey yeah. still exciting uh fatal frame mask of the lunar eclipse so this is kind of exciting for any fatal frame fans out there i remember loving that game back in the day so to see sort of any is this like a, is this a sequel is this a sequel or is this just like a it's just just like another like a remake re re uh re-add of these games on a different platform i don't know i'll figure that out later skull and bones this one i'm a little, <laughs> little worried about little uh march we'll 9th see. march we'll 9th see. yep <laughs> tbd uh, <laughs> tbd that's right uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor uh, on the 17th of March looks good. Uh, Bayonetta Origins, Syriza and the Lost Demon. This is like an offshoot, right? This is not in the traditional yeah. Bayonetta style. It's kind of like that more animated style. Uh, yes. Interesting. RE4 Remake, which I'm very excited about on the 24th. Um, and then the System Shock Remake, um, which is supposed to be slated yeah. in, in that time. It says TBA in this list, so I don't know how confident I am that that's coming out, but <laughs> we'll see. All right, now April, we're slimming, we're already slimming out, so we're getting a little bit thin in these lists here. Hogwarts Legacy for PS4 and Xbox One comes out that time. We have Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, which I am actually very excited about. Mm -hmm. right? That'll be on, cool. On the 14th. Dead Island 2 on the 28th. Um, you guys Dead Island fans, anyone here? I enjoyed the first one a little bit. I didn't play a ton of it, but it was fun, you know? Yeah. I think uh, I think a second one could be could be worth it. They've been doing some good stuff uh, over there. Um, 
you know, with the spinoff. What's the spinoff series called? Oh, man, there, there's like, Left 4 the Dead. Dying Light. Oh, de- right? yeah, Dying Light. Like, yeah. It's the same yeah. same people, right? Yeah. I know there's, people really like those games. So There's a lot of dead, a lot of dead yeah. <laughs> title names. Dying Light. Too many. Left 4 Dead. Um, we have, uh, I think that's really it for for april we mm-hmm. do have star trek resurgence i don't know if that doesn't i haven't heard much about that one so it has a tba on that one as well so not looking good all right now may only two games in may but one of those games is <laughs> tears of the kingdom on may 12th so very excited the legend of zelda for anyone that mm-hmm. isn't a, isn't aware of the uh, actual title of that one and then we have suicide squad on the 28th uh kill the justice league for most of the platforms again I'm not I'm not huge on the Marvel stuff that's been coming out recently, but I know Midnight Suns was a, a hit for some folks because that was the XCOM one, correct? Mm-hmm. It was like mm-hmm. an XCOM style, yeah. Okay. And I think this is a follow up of the Arkham games, the DC Arkham games, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I think Kevin Conroy is voicing Batman. That's like his oh, fat, his last yeah, his uh, performance. Batman performance. Yeah. Dang. Okay, that's kind of cool. That'll be that'll be a that'll be an interesting uh, send off there. So hopefully that one does well. Yeah. And then June, we have Street Fighter Six on the second, which looks really sick. I've always yeah. wanted to get into a fighting game, and I just have never had the skills to. So hopefully this is one of those ones that like is just, you know, user friendly or like newbie friendly uh, enough to where I could jump in. Mm-hmm. Um, Diablo four on the sixth, yeah. uh, another game that I haven't really had a lot of experience with. I had Diablo Immortal and I have not played any uh, like mainline console titles. So I think I'm doing that. Sunk- hundreds of hours into two and three so very excited for four maybe that's one that we all get and we do a playthrough of as well we just played diablo 4 i'm stream. absolutely on board that sounds yeah, freaking let's do it. sick uh final fantasy 16 on june 22nd hallelujah that looks amazing uh and then really that's kind of the the, the announced titles so i'm not going to go into the unannounced stuff because we'll we'll touch on that a little bit but Overall, what do you guys think? Does that look like a pretty, pretty solid start for uh, for twenty twenty three? Yeah, I think uh, you know I, when you asked us to to do this episode, you said, "Hey, you know, look at the games of twenty twenty three. Let's talk about what we're most excited for." I thought I was maybe going to have like five, <laughs> um, no problem. I can narrow that down to three easy. Started looking at the list, and I realized, oh no. Oh no, 2023 is going to be bad. My wallet is not going to be happy. I'm quite excited about a lot of what was listed here. Um, And I didn't expect it because, you know, looking at um, kind of the lull that we've had for a month or two and how it looked like it was going to continue in. um, No, apparently it's not. Apparently we're going to have at least one or two big games every month that I'm excited for. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth noting how many of these games were 2022 games. And Mm -hmm. before that, they were 2021 games. So I feel... (laughs) Yeah, I hope that we're finally catching up with, you know, the development cycle post COVID Mm -hmm. sort of post COVID. Yeah. And we start, you know, sticking to these release dates, really still release windows a little more closely than we have been. I mean, like Tears of the Kingdom was a 2021 game at first, right? I think that's right. Is that right? Oh, man, that that makes me feel kind of bad, but I think you might be right. I know it was 2020. I know it was like hard confirmed in 2022, at least at one point. Yeah. And then they delayed it again. And we were all very sad. But it's a it's, it's going to be a stacked year. I mean, I thought 22 ended really, really strongly after beginning a little slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, on the Nintendo side, we were talking about this in our last podcast. You know, there are just these huge gaps. So we're still not sure what Nintendo is going to do beyond Fire Emblem um, and Tears of the Kingdom. So there, there's a lot of empty space in Nintendo's release calendar. But uh if Xbox comes through with with all the games it's expected to, and PlayStation's yeah. got a great year lined up, like it's going to be really, really great for Xbox and PlayStation players. Yeah, yeah, it's it's looking real nice. I'm in the same boat as you guys. Uh, I was not expecting this list to be that solid, but then as I was yeah going through, I was like, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that game. Oh, I like that game. <laughs> and so what I decided to do, I don't know if I'm going to hold to this, but I I'm just picking like one game a month, and that's if. Here's a caveat. So I have one game per month that I'd want to pick up so far. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm only like halfway through the year. But if I start a game and I don't finish it, I can't move on to the next one until I finish the one that I had already bought. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal I'm setting for myself. It's going to fail one. miserably, but we're going to try it. 
so going through this list now, I, th- I thought it'd be fun for each of us to pick, like, like I said, at the top of the show, uh, our three, like just three of our favorites that we want to talk yeah. about. So why, like, you know, which, which one it is and then why you think like this has like the chance to be like one of the better ones or why people should care about it. So Matthew, let's start off with you, man. What's, uh, what's on your list for, it doesn't have to be in any order, just your top three on this list. Yeah, I think I'll go with my January release, right? Just to kind of go with your idea of one a month because January was actually really tough. Um, I mean, uh, I'm very excited for Fire Emblem Engage. I already got it on pre-order. Um, but the one that really, um, and as you were reading the list, I had a small panic attack realizing that it comes out the day after Fire Emblem Engaged, um, is Like a Dragon Ishin. Um, I I don't think that I've had much opportunity to talk about this on Nintendo because the you know the the Yakuza games are not on Nintendo hardware. Um, there is no plans for them to make it over there. But it is a series that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, it may be my favorite overall video game series. Um, mm. And um, Like a Dragon Ishin is a spinoff uh, set in the more feudal uh, era uh, of Japan. And so it's all the characters from the Yakuza games, their um, ancestors, if you will, right? Uh, it just it's just Kiryu and Majima from Yakuza, but in you know with different names and set in the feudal era. Um, and uh, you know it's a, a slasher beat 'em up style RPG game. Uh, there's a lot of contentious debate between you know, are these RPGs, are they JRPGs, or are they uh, mm. you know brawlers? They're a little of both, um, but what's great about this series is just how much they have going on uh, that you can do outside of the main story. Um, most of them are chock full of mini games and side quests that are just, they range from incredibly wacky to very heartfelt and uh, interesting stories are usually very much soap opery um, and over the top. And I absolutely adore the series. So when this got announced last year, I was um, absolutely kind of over the moon for just more yakuza um, and and now that they're changing the uh, english title to the japanese title of like a dragon um that's what we're getting right like a dragon is just the original title for um the yakuza series but the english translation just changed it so we're going back to you know standard naming procedure for that series and back i'm hoping basics. hoping more people that you know didn't get in with you know yakuza 8 uh, like a dragon um, or I've never checked out the main series. This is a great entry point because it's a spinoff. You don't need to know anything about the previous games to jump in and see if you like the idea. So I was going to ask you about that. Like, double down on that branding. It, it seems like it opens it up for a lot of people who shied away from some of those previous games. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good name change. I think it's it's uh, more appealing, you know, broadly speaking. Um, yeah. And I think, again, this is a really, just a really good entry point. No one, if you've never played anything in the series, hop in here and you're not going to be missing anything. Plus, um, uh, RGG Studios, the the Sega team behind this series, is um, you know pretty uh, renowned for their remakes um, slash remasters. They do a phenomenal job with these, typically. Um, so I think this is going to be a really stellar game for people that are even peripherally interested in the series. Heck yeah. That was, that was a great synopsis. And one question I had on this, because I've yeah. been wanting to play uh, Like a Dragon. You had mentioned that this is more of like an action RPG. Is Like a Dragon in the same kind of style? Is that also more of an action RPG? Yeah, so the the one that came out recently, um, Yakuza 8, Like a Dragon, um, new main character, and it's actually a turn-based JRPG, more in the vein of like Dragon Quest. That's what I thought, um, yeah. Yeah, but it still has, you know, the overworld, uh, you know, Mini running games. and side quests and mini games and stuff of the Yakuza series, but they changed combat from a brawler um, to a turn-based JRPG. This is a much older game in the series, so it still uses the the brawler style combat. So gotcha. you know you'll have uh, sword fighting, you know fists and and kicks and stuff, and then I think uh, guns and things like that. So there's like usually different yes. fighting styles that allow you to kind of mix up um, and combine. You know, there's usually like stance dancing and stuff to try out different moves for different enemies and things like that. So if you like just you know brawlers, beat 'em ups, action games, um, yeah. Absolutely. Don't go into this expecting like a dragon uh, style turn based combat. It will not be that. But uh, yeah, glad I asked. And if you're interested in like a dragon, we actually did a podcast on it. Um, It was part of a series called The Other Side, where we talked about games that weren't on the Switch, but we thought should be. And Mm -hmm. that was the first one that we covered. So we've got one. It's it's back a few months, but we've got one on it. 
Nice. Yeah. yeah. Check that out. That'll be good. Um, all right, Justin, what's, uh, what's on your list here? First one, uh, another January release, One Piece Odyssey. Oh, oh I like, skipped over this, I think. I'm sorry. That's all good. <laughs> I, I don't have much to say about it because I literally know nothing about One Piece other than there's like a million episodes <laughs> and uh, yes. uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, mangas. But this game looks really, really good. It's a turn-based RPG, and it's built by the same development team that built... Uh, Dragon Quest 11 S. Oh, I did not know this. Yeah, that's yep. news to me. Oh. So even some of the art um, is, is very, very similar. The character models look very similar. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited about it. I don't know anything about One Piece. Apparently, you don't have to know much about One Piece. You can just jump in and the game is like retelling older stories from the series. Um, I, we'll see how it goes. I think I'm going to pick it up on sale. Not, I'm, you know, I'm not going to pay 60 bucks for it right off the top, but um, it looks really, really cool. Um, not coming to the Switch, unfortunately, so I'm probably going to pick it up for the PS5 in a few months. It's probably the best move because, yeah, I just feel like even those games that don't seem like they're that graphically intensive, uh, for whatever reason, more lately, I've noticed a, a big drip, like a big drop, sorry, in uh, in quality. Like even Tunic was a good example of that. Where, like mm -hmm. the Switch version, which just wasn't wasn't that great. Uh, yeah. So if you can, yeah, PS5, it'll, it'll look real nice on there. And uh, yeah. all those... All those uh, edges will be nice and crispy the way they should be. So nice. I have not watched One Piece. My uh, younger brother has watched all of the episodes um, and uh, he loves it. And yeah. yeah, One Piece is considered like one of the best animes ever. Yeah. So I've read a couple hundred of the uh, the manga pages, you know, uh, volumes, uh, but that's about it. But uh, it's a great series. It's a lot of fun, um, especially if you're into that kind of stuff, you know, Um this game does look really good, though. Uh, I've never played a One Piece game. I, like I said, I've only got a couple hours into the series of you know, investment, but it looks like a really good experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just it being developed by the uh, Dragon Quest folks. That's huge for me. Big so, sell. Yeah. yeah, the pedigree is there. I'm not putting it on my list, though, Justin. I'm not going to do it. I don't What's need on to play your this list? game. I don't need to play this game. Hey, I'm glad you asked. We'll talk <laughs> about it. I'm just going to get it out of the way because we know it's, it's on all of our lists. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, the uh, follow-up to 2017's master hit, masterpiece, uh, Breath of the Wild. I am so ready just to lose myself in this game. I was talking to my wife tonight about this, and she's like, oh, what, you know, what games are you looking forward to? And I was like, what, what games do you think I'm looking forward to? And like hearing like her guesses were pretty funny, but once I told her it was Zelda, she's like, oh, okay. And, and I was like, do you know what it's called? And she's like, it's trials of the sand it's the <laughs> sacred sh sacred shield and i was like that's you're not far off you're not far off <laughs> it's tears of the kingdom right yeah <laughs> yep but regardless i am so pumped for this uh we talked about this a while ago but like one of my fate like i love when a game just takes over uh the general mass of mm -hmm. the industry um so we were talking about that with animal crossing how i just loved that period of time even though it was COVID times which are terrible times but when animal crossing came out that was just like that was it and then before that for me it really was like breath of the wild like that kind of just took over um and really like reignited my passion or interest in games again i was like man this game is so freaking good like i just am having a great time uh, so yeah, more of that and just them fixing some of the small complaints that we would have about breath of the wild, like the dungeon stuff and mm -hmm. I'm in, but even if that game doesn't fix it, I'm still playing the crap out of it. Like there's nothing that's going to deter me from enjoying this, you know, Absolutely. Even, even if a huge game like Odyssey two came out same day, <laughs> Zelda, Zelda no. for me all the way. <laughs> Sorry, it's, Justin. No, this is one of those games that. I have to really think about other games that are coming out around it and mm -hmm. space things out. I, you can't play a, a Zelda game like this alongside another game. This is, to your point, Jake, it's going to take over your life, your gaming yes. life. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's a huge commitment. I'm sort of glad there's not much else coming out around that time. Yet. Yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, and maybe, maybe they'll just uh, hold back and, and let Nintendo take that that month. But... <laughs> we talked a little bit about this on our pod, our resolutions pod and predictions pod. I think it's going to be great. I don't think it's going to be as good as Breath of the Wild was. I mean, it's just so hard to follow something like that up. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's uh, uh, 
ideas about it and hopes for it are so high. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm being a little pessimistic so that I hope I'm surprised, but <laughs> I can't wait to play it. It's just, it's, it's so much to live up to after breath of the wild. Yeah. Maybe that's what's more exciting about it is just the anticipation, you know, cause like once it's here, it's here and yeah, it's Zelda and it's great. I'm going to play it. But I think the whole idea of, yeah, what is it going to be like? That is probably what I'm most excited about. Yeah. I'm, I'm already committed to a hundred percent playthrough of it. Um, as per the, the rules of the uh, last episode, Justin and I recorded. So, um, if it, <laughs> If you hadn't put it on your list, it would have been the first one I mentioned on mine. So the only reason I didn't is because it was already on yours when uh, we got the you know we got to talking about this episode. So, yeah, it's it being uh, I'm imagining it's on most gamers' uh, lists this year. Yeah, that is that is the one. Um, all right, well then I guess jumping over, uh, Matthew, what's your what's another one for you? All right, number two for me um, is a game that I have been putting on clown makeup for for every Nintendo Direct <laughs> over the last two years. Um, and that is Hollow Knight Silk Song, uh, the sequel, follow-up, you know, spiritual successor, whatever you want to call it, to uh, one of my favorite games of all time, which is uh, the Immaculate Hollow Knight. Mm. Um, probably uh, a, I mean, definitely a top three Metroidvania of all time, um, up there with the likes of Super Metroid and yep. Symphony of the Night. That's probably my trifecta of Metroidvanias, um, and I. Th- think Silk Song is probably going to be superior um, based off of what little we know. Um, I feel really confident in Team Cherry um, producing something fantastic. And I think that the way that they've been so quiet with the game and really just kind of trickled out a you know, couple little bits of information here and there um, it actually speaks well for the game. Um, I, I don't see that as a bad sign. I see that as a development team that is concerned with a really good product and doesn't want to show anything until it's ready. So the fact that we heard last year at the Xbox, um, event, right. That all of the games they showed were, were the Xbox event where Silk Songs trailer officially premiered. We heard all of those games would be coming out within a calendar year. So even though it doesn't have a firm date yet, I am confident that it will hit its target of that year and we'll get it sometime in the first half of, of this year. So I tried to stick with stuff that had firm deadlines, but this is one I just had to say, you know, it's coming in 2023. I'm confident about it. And it's probably, um, for me probably going to be my game of the year is what i'm anticipating um keep that clown makeup handy you know uh, maybe i've I've got you know i've got it back there so if i need to the wig and and you know (laughs) squeaky nose are in the wings but um yeah i I mean there's a lot of games this year that i could see being any in a given year uh my game of the year and i think this one's going to eclipse all of those i mean this is a year where we're getting you know whoa whoa tears of the kingdom Baldur's gate (laughs) three Are you kidding me? What are you? Final Fantasy 16, uh, but I think Silk Song is is my most anticipated. Okay. Well, in terms of anticipation, I'll I'll allow it to be the best game of the year, but I think you're you're a fool for saying it's gonna be (laughs) how dare you be better than Tears of the Kingdom. Still, still a top top three Metroidvania of all time. All right. And uh, I will not hear any anything (laughs) to the contrary. I think to quote you last time, there was something about Hollow Knight, Silk Song. I think you were like, inject it into my veins. I yes. think there were... <laughs> I want it. I want it. I want it immediately. So I think you're, you're a little bit of bias. Yeah. I'm just gonna oh, say, 100%. I'm, just gonna... <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying this is an unbiased opinion, I, but I'm also I'm saying just... it's a right opinion. So you're right. It you is know, a right opinion. It, it is the right be, opinion. It can be biased and correct. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, no, yeah. To, to follow up just briefly on yours, I'm so excited about uh, Silk Song as well. Um, I did not expect to, like, I happened upon Hollow Knight through a Spotify playlist. I think I was telling you all nice. this. I just heard, um, I think the City of City of Tears, or what's the the rainy the rainy section in that um, that world? Anyways, Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Gorgeous City of Something. Um, and, amazing soundtrack. And the soundtrack, I was like, oh, this is good. And then I looked up the game, and I was like, oh, the game's good. And I was like, why isn't this yeah. on the Switch yet? And then I think like it got announced for the Switch uh, like a few uh, a few weeks later. I was like, oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, very excited about that. Uh, Justin, what's uh, what's on your list, brother? Another one that doesn't have a, a sure date. Um, but we've got a window. So sometime in winter, we will be getting Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Really stoked about this. Um, you know, the, 
the first one, the first part of this game, the remake, people criticized it. They didn't like some of the changes that were made to the story. Um, it's a very linear game, so there, you know, there's not a whole lot of exploration to be done. Mm-hmm. But for me, it really reinvigorated my love for Final Fantasy VII. I hadn't played VII in you know, 10, 15 years before that game uh, came out. And it was the reason I bought a PS5. I saw it and I just absolutely had to play it. So I'm really stoked to to get back into it. Um, just finished playing through Crisis Core um, a couple of weeks ago. Nice. And I just realized how unprepared I am to see Zack and Aerith <laughs> die in Rebirth. <laughs> like it's just... Dude, spoilers, dude. Oh, right. Yep. Yep. Huge spoilers there for this old <laughs> game. But, um, you know, it's... It's cool that Square Enix is embracing a, a reimagining of that game. And it's mm-hmm. not just a, a straight recreation. Final Fantasy VII on the PS1 will always be there for us. We can always go back and play it for, for the purists. But mm-hmm. we're getting something new that's set in that same universe. A different way to experience the characters, get to know them a little better, see the story from a different perspective. Yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it was on um, the, the insert credit podcast i think tim rogers was saying something about how um final fantasy 7 remake is really final fantasy 7 dash 2 right i mean it's not it's not a remake it's it's the sequel to final fantasy 7 in a lot of ways right and i think yeah. that that's what has me so excited about rebirth is because i think this is the game um where remake really laid the foundation right without getting into spoilers for you know some really interesting uh new directions for that game um, and if they can stick the landing, um, I think we're in for something really special with that. So I'm hoping it hits, you know, at the end of, I hope we get it as a holiday 23, you know, again, the winter date is quite nebulous, but um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed uh, with you that yeah. we'll get that this year. I'm a little weary on, of, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but like, I'm just, I'm still a little weary on this one coming out this mm-hmm. year um, only because of the the cycle that the re- the original remake had to go through yeah. like we had heard about it and then it just it just seems like forever maybe i'm just imagining this or remembering this wrong but um th- the fact that like i mean we have a whole year so who knows and I, right. I'm, I'm i'm i hope that it comes out uh but if it doesn't come out this year that gives me more time to finish up final Fantasy seven remake because i think i'm like halfway through that right now and i haven't finished it up yet so yeah oh just blast through it man just blast through it just put on accessibility <laughs> features make it easy and just there freaking crush yeah. it yeah no damage <laughs> <laughs> and then play through it again on hard where you can't use any items and your mp doesn't recover that doesn't sound do fun that sounds yeah, i wouldn't do that that sounds like a bad time to be honest uh <laughs> i'm not gonna do that yeah super excited about that um all right well uh let's see here i guess i'm next on the list uh Following that kind of like JRPG, uh, you know, list we got here, Sea of Stars. Um, this one also does not have a firm release date, I don't believe. Uh, but this it, this game just appears to be doing everything right. Um, mm-hmm. It is a take on the traditional JRPG like formula uh, by a smaller studio, um, but they're pulling in like big name talent to compose the music in this game. The pixel art just looks gorgeous, um, and it has a little bit of those um, action-based or um, you know action-based combat uh, that's turn-based as well. So you're in a turn-based scenario, and you have to time your button presses exactly right to be able to do the most damage or block damage, uh, vice versa. And that just that is like hitting all the marks for me in terms of what mm. I would want from a game. Um, Can't so, stand that combat. Really? Yeah, I can't stand it. Oh, I love it. You don't like that? No, I hate it. Oh, what what don't you like about it? I don't know. It it feels like a gimmick thing. Like, I like it the first few times you have to do it. But Mm -hmm. then when everybody's attack depends on timing it, it, Mm. it's just, it gets kind of old. Like, I'm thinking specifically about Paper Mario and how it's fun to get in the rhythm of it at first. And then you realize that you have to do it for every character in your party, every single attack. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there's only two people in your party for Paper Mario, but too many, (laughs) too many. (laughs) But I agree, it can get a a little uh, tedious. But like, I I don't know, that just keeps me engaged. I'm just I'm more engaged when I'm like actually doing something. Whereas Mm -hmm. I find with turn based combat, I can I can just check out. I'm just like, yep, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again, just pushing A and hoping to get to this stupid encounter. Whereas this one, I'm you would love chain decos, man. 
Yeah, is, is it's it, got yep. it's got this overdrive system where you have to balance your attacks. It, it, it's it's just a different way right. to to keep you engaged. But yeah. I'm really stoked about Sea of Stars too. Um, it's by the same group that made the Messenger. Mm-hmm. If you've played mm-hmm. that uh, side scroller, um, I think it actually takes place in the same world as the same Messenger. Universe, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm really curious about how they're making that work. This is also another one of those 2022 games that got pushed to 23. Mm-hmm. Um, when you first see the game you're like oh man just a like a basic 16 bit uh jrpg why did that get pushed why are we taking you know so long to develop this thing but then when you actually take a look at the trailers um jake to your point like the the talent they've got coming in to do the music there's a lot going on here this game looks like it has a lot of depth Mm -hmm. i think we talked actually about this a little bit last time we were on your pod if i recall correctly i think Mm -hmm. i I had a little bit of a Chat about. I mean, I can't really speak to this from an unbiased perspective. I backed it on Kickstarter way back when. Um, <laughs> yep. I I have Full a little disclosure. Yeah, I'll have a tombstone in the game with my name on it, so that'll be fun to hunt down. Um, that is awesome. Somewhere, and um, you know, the second I saw that uh, Yasunori Mitsuda of um, you know Zeno Saga, Zeno Gears, Chrono Trigger, right, fame uh, mm-hmm. would be contributing a few songs to the soundtrack. I I knew I was in. Plus, I loved the Messenger. I think the team behind it um, is fantastic, and I trust them to make a really loving uh, homage to Chrono Trigger and games like it. So, um, you know. Just having finished Chained Echoes, you know, I'm even more excited to see what a slightly larger team with the same kind of passion for those games can pull off. Yeah. Um, but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Heck yeah. This one's going to be sick. I'm hoping it comes out this year. I have a feeling it will just because it got pushed from 2022. I but, think it will. But yeah. we'll see. We'll see. All right. Back to the top for our last round through. Uh, Matthew, what's your what's your last game you want to tell folks about? All right. So this was hard. There was a lot left on the list. Again, I want to make just a a quick shout out to Baldur's Gate 3, uh, a game that has been in early access for a little over a year now. um, And I'm very excited for it. But, um, you know, I I didn't see anyone else covering it yet. uh, So I threw it on my list. Um, It's Final Fantasy 16. I mean, come on. Am I not going to talk about a JRPG uh, for at least one of my picks? Of course I'm going to. And I'm going to pick the biggest one of the year. And that is Final Fantasy 16. it was inevitable. It was going to make my list. Um, I, you know, I understand that there is split opinion on this game. Um, a lot of people are not fans of the single, you know, where all party members will be fully AI, kind of like in Final Fantasy 15, that it's largely a, you know, action focused single character uh, take on Final Fantasy. Um, and, uh, but when I saw, summons in the form of giant kaiju battles when i saw that the devil may cry 5 combat director is the combat director for this game and um you know i've talked about this before i am a diehard final fantasy 14 player i do uh, i've been playing it since beta um since 1.0 you know before the game got fully remade into a realm reborn and and you know smash charts all over the you know all over the board um and the lead designer who is in charge uh, or developer who is in charge of kind of uh, writing the ship over on Final Fantasy 14, uh, Yoshi P uh, is in charge of, he's the, the lead on this game. Um, and I trust him to make a solid game with a very interesting story. He knows how to uh, direct and manage a team. Uh, he will produce a solid, fantastic experience. And I am confident in that. So um as someone who who plays a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, really trusts the people behind this game. Uh, it's maybe uh, it's my most anticipated JRPG. It's one of my top three. No no questions asked. Uh, even if I wasn't trying to avoid putting copies from your guys's lists, this one was going to make the the cut no matter what. So I'm glad I got to be the one to chat about it. But that's that's it for me. That's kind of the big one. The big one. I yeah. um. So I haven't played, I haven't touched a mainline Final Fantasy game, really. I guess my remake, I guess you could count. Um, but really since then, it's been like Final Fantasy X. That's the last yeah. one that I've that's the last one that I've played uh all the way through. Uh so this is one that I'm like again just wary of only because of how beefy this game is gonna be. Yeah. Just like how big it's gonna be. Because I know 15 was pretty monstrous as well. So mm-hmm. 
I'm a little nervous about that in terms of size, but yeah, I, I would love to just dive in. And the fact that it's more action, action-based combat as opposed to like full-on turn-based, um, I think I'm a little more interested because I tend to do better with those those kinds of games. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I can, I can, yeah, I can just kind of crush through this and uh, have fun. So I'm looking forward to this as well. Yeah. You gave me, you gave me a lot more information <laughs> just through your your kind of breakdown right there. So. Yeah, I hope 15 has a, a little bit better of a combat system. I'm sorry, 16 has a better combat system than 15. I always mm-hmm. thought 15 was clunky and was never able to get through much of it because the combat was just a drag. Yeah. Personally, I don't know. Maybe yeah. other people liked it. Well, I think no. it was divisive. I, I think it was it. a, yeah, as far as Final Fantasy combat systems go, I think most people would say that um, it didn't quite stick the landing. It did some fun stuff, but. Um, yeah, it's it was a little bit too obtuse. Yeah. Remake has a, a really good combat system, though, because mm-hmm. it's it's sort of action and also turn based. You know, you're controlling your mm-hmm. other characters, you're throwing spells and stuff in that sort of slow mo. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, so I, I really appreciated that one more, and I hope 16 has something like that. I mean, the AI characters, I'm okay with actually. I, yeah. I don't mind um, having AI party members that are attacking on their own. Um, it sort of helps me get into the realism of it. Like I wouldn't actually be controlling these people if we were on a, a journey somewhere, right? I've got to depend on them to make the right decisions. And maybe I can tell them like how to attack or um, when to hold back and stuff. But I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I, I final, I'm sorry. Um, Dragon Quest Eleven was like that. I just let my other characters yeah. do whatever and uh, hope for the best. What if, what if there's like a system implemented eventually for RPGs where like, characters did make mistakes like they just they acknowledge that they made the wrong choice in battle it's like hey man i'm sorry i was throwing way too many potions i used all of our potions like <laughs> we're out <laughs> i'd love it i'd love it give me more uh give me more just uh weird interactions with party members any game that does strange interactions with party members is, is okay by me i say hey, look i saw you were about to finish that guy off and i just used, i used my special attack and then wasted all my mp i'm sorry about that yeah. but you know <laughs> yeah. here we are well, so <laughs> it's funny you say that because um it, you know just this is an anecdote about final fantasy 14 uh, they implemented a system uh for dungeons in final fantasy 14 which is the massive multiplayer uh, online rpg if mm-hmm. you're not familiar with it yeah. um where you can run dungeons with ai controlled party members right characters from the main story and there's a character in that game that as soon as the limit break gauge fills up no matter what you're doing it could be a boss fight it could be just a random encounter she'll just throw off the limit break and waste it um (laughs) and it's fantastic and it's become a a bit of a meme uh in the community about you know uh her character personality is exactly that right uh you know limit breaks available gotta use it right use it right now No strategy just go (laughs) just Uh, all i love it i would love (laughs) to see something like that in 16 that's great i love it all right uh justin What's your what's your last one on your list, brother? My last one, Hogwarts Legacy. Oh yeah, I am such a sucker for Harry Potter games. <laughs> I, I you know playing through like all the ones back on the the PlayStation One and the Game Boy and stuff. I, I loved them. I was a Harry Potter kid back in the day. Mm-hmm. I was just the right age to to yep. get swept up in all that magic stuff. Um, but all those games suck, or a lot of those games suck <laughs> really bad. Um, yeah. So. I don't know. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about it. But what I am really looking forward to in this game is this is the first Harry Potter game that's been confident enough to branch off from the main story of, you know, just that Harry Voldemort fight mm-hmm. going way back in time. I think it's set in like 1890 or something. Um, so it's going to be a standalone story. Um, I hope they're not relying too much on the the Harry Potter one through seven or one through eight or whatever how many years he was there um in some ways it kind of reminds me of like what star wars has done um you know finally breaking off of the skywalker saga doing some different things yeah. um anyway it, i'm i'm interested in it for that just to see if there's is there more to this world than just those few years that harry was at hogwarts is it yeah. going to be like a like a tolkien thing where there's an entire universe to explore or does it really just come down to that same story over and over and over that said, the developers behind this game, uh, Avalanche Software, the last few games they've made were games like Cars 3 for the PlayStation 3 and Hannah Montana Spotlight, Spotlight World Tour. So, you know, 
absolute bangers that everyone remembers uh the pedigree yeah. i mean listen listen i from everything i've seen at least in the trailers the game looks great that's yeah. how they get you yeah that's how they get you those vertical slices just showing you only the best parts um so it could be an absolute turd when it comes out <laughs> Who yeah, knows? yeah it looks slick though it does look good <laughs> and everything this is saying it is or at least portraying itself to be is exactly what i would want from a harry potter rpg as well like open world game it just looks it looks great um you know i think in any game that kind of ties into an ip like this i've always been more interested in just exploring the world that i you know as a kid conjured up in my head mm -hmm. or in the movie i'm like oh sweet i get to walk around and like look at this that was like what kingdom hearts was for me honestly it was like i you know the combat was fine and stuff and i love those storylines just absolute nonsense but what was the best part is like oh i'm in ariel's little mermaid underwater place and i get to explore this or i'm in hercules i'm in the mount olympus and i can walk around in these clouds and check this out or i'm in toy story now and i'm you mm -hmm. know in kingdom hearts 3 i get to go to these places so i mm -hmm. think for me that's like the biggest appeal is just being able to see what they put in this place one of the downsides to like any prequel if this is really set in the same timeline the stakes are just really low you know mm -hmm. like like the voldemort thing was the biggest you know crisis in the wizarding world ever and so I, I feel like that hurts it automatically right off the bat you know just you know nothing major is going to happen because it would mess up the continuity of the rest of the games and the movies and the books and stuff yeah, yeah. so i wonder what it's going to be you know just like a, a rogue hippogriff or something that's just not very nice just a a mean monster somewhere you have to stop yep but you can kill students too, or something like that. So that's that's something, you know. I hope so. <laughs> Matthew, are you playing this game? Nah, it's a pass for me. I'm not. You know, I never really wow. got big into Harry Potter. Uh, honestly, the game doesn't seem all that appealing to me. So I'm I'm skipping this one. There's too many other things coming out this year. I'm not gonna have the time for a game this big, anyways. <laughs> so I'll I'll live vicariously through you guys and see how it goes. So, see what's happening. Yeah. S see if it's any wow. good if it comes out. An yeah. RPG, Matt's gonna skip. Uh, yeah, yeah, this doesn't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not into it. I don't know. It's that. You know, again, I didn't really grow up reading the books. Um, so for me, I don't have any of the nostalgia attached to it, and I think that is part of why I'm just like, you know, yeah, I'll wait and see what's going on with it. But I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, with so much on the horizon in 23 plus you know, my backlog that is never ending. Um, I've got to be selective somewhere. And uh, if I don't have the pull, right, I just got to say that's, you know, that's a pass for me. Jake, so. is it a day one pickup for you? I think so. Yeah, this is one of the ones that I said, for like, if, the, if I'm going to buy 12 games this year, Hogwarts is going to be one that I'm going to pick up. Uh, so I am I'm definitely looking forward to this one, but only again, if I have completed the, the month's previous one. So this is coming out <laughs> February, right? Uh, or I think March. So. Yeah. So it's early in 2023. So I, I think, you know, the chances are good that I'll have at least finished the game that I, I don't <laughs> even have one picked for January yet. So I there think for me, it's just Ragnarok trying to, trying to finish Ragnarok before Harry Potter comes out. So I get that like a dragon, get that. You shouldn't. No, 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 no. You've gone too far. You've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, closing out the list then, uh, my last one would be resident evil Four remake. Um, so I remember picking this up on a GameCube as a as a wee lad. I don't even know how I got this game, to be honest, because my mom was not too fond of me uh, playing mature rated games. Uh, but I think I, you know, I, I ended up getting a copy of this somehow on GameCube and I hated scary games. I still to this day don't like scary things. Um, but RE4 worked for me. You know, it was just scary enough to where um, you know, I still wanted to play. And also, like, I felt like I could defend myself very well in this game. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm leveling up my pistol and I can keep these guys away from me and I'm not as scared, you know. Uh, so it was just the perfect balance of those two things. And I think that's like, this is where the, the, the series really took off for a lot of people. And then five and then six and then kind of went down and then seven kind of brought it back up a little bit. So they, I, I feel like they've really had a good cr track record lately with the remakes. Um and then RE4 is the, you know, is the one that's most deserving of a remake uh, mm -hmm. that I think fans are really, really excited for. And I'm one of those fans. I think just, you know, I'm ready to be scared again and uh, get a sick gun and talk to the stranger and get some some upgrades. So I'm all in. I'm all in on this one. 
Yeah. I've been on a multi-year attempt to play through the resident evil series um i don't do scary games well uh i can play for maybe 30 minutes and i gotta put it down because i'm a big old baby um <laughs> but i love them right same with scary movies I, I i love watching horror flicks i love a good you know a, a good uh, genre you know a horror movie uh, nope. and um too sc- too that's, scary. that's that's my jam but mm-hmm. there's something about being in control of it having the controller that actually makes it far too scary for me in a lot of cases <laughs> um so so far in and i think when i started this four years ago um i've played through resident evil zero uh the original remake for, you know the first one that came out on the gamecube um and re7 Mm-hmm. And then I've paid about 30 minutes of village and about 30 minutes of the RE2 remake. And they were both just far too scary for me. And I haven't gone back to them. So eventually uh, there will be a, a dry spell this year where I will sit down with either uh, RE2 remake or uh, village and, and finally finish one of those. But um, I'm, I'm aiming for 2032. I'll be done with the uh, Resident Evil series. So we'll see. 2032. I love, I love the uh, realistic goal you set for yourself. That's great. This one looks real good though. I'm, I, you know, this one might get me, uh, to, to play through another one. Cause I do think that the action focused combat, um, of, of, you know, some of the latter, uh, resident evils does, you know, reduce the, the scaries enough for me to, to get in there. Cause you feel strong enough that the, the fear is not as, as, uh, all encompassing. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, this one for you or no, you know, resident evil never really clicked with me. I've I've played through the first one a couple of times. I tried to play through the the remake that they ported over, the GameCube version they ported over to Switch Mm -hmm. uh, around Halloween or so. And something about it is just so antiquated. I can't get I can't get down with it. Like you I, I get it's survival horror, so you have to be careful about, you know, using up your items, using your ammo. But I didn't realize that once you pick something up, you can't drop it. Hmm. So there are only certain, you know, a certain number of um, slots you have in your bag for things. Yep. And if you accidentally pick something up and you don't have any space left and you can't get the next thing you need, just got to drop it. it, it it's so frustrating. So <laughs> I, I never got too far with it. Um, I do like scary games. I like, we mentioned the Fatal Frame series earlier. Mm-hmm. Really like that series a lot. Um, but I don't know. Um, Resident Evil never really clicked with me and I wasn't sure if I could just jump into another one without, you know, knowing the story of the first couple. So Mm -hmm. haven't haven't tried again. Well, what I will say is the story in this one, I mean, it really goes off the walls. uh, So I don't think you have to worry about like being being up to snuff on what's going on. Um, And that's why I think this one's a little bit more digestible, too, from a scary standpoint for me, because I'm just like at one point you're fighting like a lake monster, you know, so like (laughs) so if I'm fighting lake monsters like, okay, this is more of an action, an action movie than it is a a horror. There there are some horror elements, but um, it balances those out nicely. So you're not scared the whole time. You're like, okay, I'm on the water fighting a giant fish, you know, so (laughs) beautiful. End end of the day. Looking forward to that one. Uh, but there, there it is, guys. There's our, there's our official, official nine for 2023, and that's it. That's it. So if you guys don't play anything else, play these nine games, and yeah. you'll, you'll have a great year. Uh, so unfortunately, all that is the end of our podcast. I'm going to close it out there. Um, but listeners, tell us what your favorite, your most anticipated games are for 2023. We'd love to know. Uh, you can just do that on Spotify. We'll have a, a poll up, and you can just answer right there, or you can write into bitcast at bitblogist.com. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much again for being on the podcast. You're absolute legends. Pleasure as always. We're always happy to be on. Uh, and for anyone out there, where can the good folks find you on the internets? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Justin. They can find me on Twitter at puffy red shirt and, uh, all of our Nintendo watcher content on nintendowatcher.com. Yep. And I'm over on Twitter at zero parse, Z E R O parse. Uh, drop by, send me a follow. I'll follow you back and we'll have a little chat. That's right. You heard them. You heard them guys. Go give them a follow and uh, check out what they're doing over there at Nintendo watcher. There's some great stuff going on, but until next time, this has been Bitcast. Thanks for tuning in to talk about some stuff. Adios. Adios.